Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. That's part of our countdown to 2025, 13 integrals in 13 days. So we have here the indefinite integral of natural log of square root of x plus the square root of x plus 1 dx. And I had a request a little bit ago to do something with integration by parts. So I thought this one would fit the bill. And I'll just give you a hint. Integration by parts is the first step. And simplifying du just right is really key for solving this integral. So that's the part that kind of took me the most time. And I was a little nervous because it's, you know, in the first step. But then after that, everything kind of falls into place pretty nicely. So set up your integration by parts. If you get stuck cleaning up du, maybe check back in and then see if you can finish it on your own because that part might give you a little bit of trouble. Okay, so let's choose u and dv. No surprise, when we have natural log in our argument, majority of the time we let that be u. Majority, notice I said majority, not always. So we have natural log square root of x plus square root of x plus one, and then dv is just gonna be dx. So now when we find du, derivative of natural log of something is one over the something. And then I have to multiply by the derivative of the something of the argument, which involves the chain rule. So derivative of square root of x is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, or 1 over 2 rad x. And then similarly, derivative of square root of x plus 1 would just be 1 over 2 rad x plus 1 dx. And let's clean it up now, okay? Notice I can factor out a one half from both these terms and I'm actually gonna put it all the way in the front. So I've got one half and then we have here one over rad x plus rad x plus one times itself. And this part is where I thought, oh, maybe I should write it as the quantity squared and play around with it like that. Nope, that was fruitless. So the way to go is one of these, it doesn't matter which one, just one of them. Let's get a common denominator actually, believe it or not. So keep, keep the one half out front. And then this is one over rad x plus rad x plus one. Common denominator here would just be rad x times rad x plus one. So I would need to multiply this guy top and bottom by rad x plus one. The second term, I would need to multiply top and bottom by rad x. And then now I have that common denominator, which is rad x times rad x plus one. Are we okay? Don't forget the dx. All right, and then see, this is the crucial step where so, so beautifully, rad x plus rad x plus one cancels out. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And then du just ends up being one half times one over rad x times rad x plus one dx. Okay, okay then. And then don't forget, dv is dx. So then dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, v is x. That was relaxing. All right, now let's apply our by parts formula and then rewrite what we have. So u, v, let me put the x in the front, right? That'll look so nice. So we'll have x times natural log square root of x plus square root x plus one minus integral v du. Okay, so that's gonna be x over two square root of x, square root of x plus one dx. Are we all right? Okay, very nice, very nice, very nice. Let's just focus on this integral right here. And I'm not going to keep rewriting the first part, okay? We're just going to focus on that little guy right there. So let's consider. I'm going to put one half integral x dx over square root of x times square root of x plus one. I'm feeling like going in with a nice little substitution. 
Um, I decided to let t be square root of x. Remember, don't use u because we already used up u when we did by parts. So let's let t equal square root of x. Square both sides first before you find dt. It's going to make life a lot easier. And this is going to be useful for us to have as well, the fact that t squared is x. Because notice, here's this x up here. Here's an x down there. We're going to be using that. And then now we can differentiate both sides. So 2t dt is dx. All right, so let's come through, substitute everything in. One half is still hanging outside. x all by its lonesome is t squared. What about this dx? dx is 2t dt. Okay, 2t dt over. Here is square root of x. Who's that? That's just t. And then we have square root of x plus 1. Well, plain old x is t squared plus 1. Take a second. Are you guys okay? Yeah? All right. Now we have some canceling fun. Indeed, we do. 1 half and 2 cancel. And then notice this t is gone with the t that was in the denominator. So then I just have integral t squared dt over square root t squared plus one. And as soon as I see something like this, I go, oh, trig sub time, you know, I've got that t squared plus one in the denominator under a radical, another t squared up top. So u sub is not my obvious choice. You might be able to play around with some substitutions first, but I think the trig sub is unavoidable at this point. So Looking at this expression trapped under the radical, since it involves addition, we're going to come through with tangent as our substitution. So let's let t equal tangent theta, and then dt would be secant squared theta d theta. Okay, so now let's rewrite everything. Upstairs we have t squared, so that's tan squared theta, and then dt is all of this secant squared theta d theta and then in the denominator we have square root t squared plus one so that's tan squared theta plus one okay perfect so tan squared theta plus one that's secant squared theta but it's underneath a radical so that'll just simplify to secant theta which i can cancel with one of the secants up top here so then we have tan squared theta, secant theta, d theta. Oh, I know where this is going. Do you? Well, if you play around, you can't do u sub. No, because the power on tangent is even, secant is odd. No, it won't work out for us. So we go in and we replace tan squared theta with none other than secant squared theta minus one. Oh yes. And then distribute your secant theta through. So then this is secant cubed theta minus secant theta d theta. Now, some students memorize antiderivative of secant cubed theta. If you don't integrate on the regular, then maybe you don't remember it or you don't feel the need to memorize it, which is fine. I'm going to work through it right now from scratch with you guys. But, like, if you're really in the thick of it, you know, like you're in calc two uh, differentials or calc three even, and you see this, you just like don't want to waste your time going through the process. Like some students also memorize antiderivative of natural log of x, you know, just to not waste time. So I'll do it. The, I'll work it all out with you guys. But if you want to memorize it, I don't think it's a bad idea, depending on where you are in your math career. Okay, so this guy gets split up because integral seeking cube theta d theta we're going to set it up by parts. It's got a boomerang. And then minus this one we just know, right? Integral secant theta d theta. So we're just going to focus on secant cubed theta d theta, just in case you don't have it memorized. And I'm going to call it I, my integral. Secant cubed theta d theta. We're just working on this guy. So the first step is you write it out as secant theta times secant squared theta d theta. So you can set it by parts. And we already used u and v. So I'm writing u bar and dv bar for this round of integration by parts. So the only one whose antiderivative I know would be nicely, nicely, <laughs> secant squared theta d theta 
Don't choose them the other way around. And then U would be secant theta. Or U bar, excuse me. So then DU bar is going to be secant theta, tan theta, D theta. And then V bar is just tan theta. Yes? Okay, so the antiderivative or the integral of secant cube theta d theta, I'm calling it i, is equal to, by my biparts formula, secant theta tan theta minus integral. And then this right here would be secant theta tan squared theta d theta when I take v du. So secant theta tan squared theta d theta. Okay. And then, ooh, this should look tempting, right? We're going to come in one more time, replace tan squared theta with secant squared theta minus 1. So now my integral is equal to secant theta tan theta minus. I have secant theta times secant squared theta minus 1 d theta. Let's distribute. So we have i equals secant theta tan theta minus integral secant cube theta d theta plus integral secant theta d theta. Uh-huh. Why am I so excited? Because my boomerang has come back to me. Wasn't this my original integral? Look, look, look. i was integral or indefinite integral of secant cube theta d theta. Here it is. So if you haven't seen this before, i equals, you write secant theta, tan theta, minus, all of this is just i, plus integral, secant theta, d theta. And then just treat i like some variable you're solving for. So I'm going to add i to both sides. Now I have 2i equals secant theta, tan theta, Plus, I'm leaving this as integral secant theta d theta for a reason. Don't worry. And then at long last, i is 1 half secant theta tan theta plus 1 half integral secant theta d theta. Okay? Woo! All right, so like I said, some students memorized this. Now, do you remember where we were before I did this little secant cubed moment? We were here. We had integral of secant cubed theta d theta, which is down below, but I also had minus integral secant theta d theta. So that's why I didn't evaluate this guy, because I can just combine it with the other one that's waiting for me. Yes. So back to the problem that we had, which was integral secant cubed theta d theta minus integral secant theta d theta, that's going to equal all of this is my integral secant cubed theta. So then we have 1 half secant theta tan theta plus 1 half integral secant theta d theta, and then this comes down, minus integral. You see? OK, and then these are the same. So then really, this is just 1 half secant theta tan theta minus one half integral secant theta d theta. I know I'm writing a lot of steps. I just don't want anyone lost, you know? I thought this was a fun problem. I don't want you getting lost in the sauce. Okay, one half secant theta tan theta minus one half antiderivative of secant theta natural log absolute value secant theta plus tan theta plus c. And I didn't do C1 or whatever. Well, I did it first because I wasn't sure, but then I didn't play around with this C. Stayed till the end. So there we go. Now it's time to go back to the original variable before trig sub. Do you remember what it even was? Yeah. So we had let T equal tangent theta. So think of that as T over 1. So tangent theta is ratio of opposite over adjacent side. So then the hypotenuse would be square root t squared plus 1. Okay, so let's use this triangle now. Go back to t's. So we have 1 half. Secant theta would be ratio of hypotenuse over adjacent. So 1 half times just square root of t squared plus 1 times tan theta is t minus 1 half natural log absolute value. Secant theta is rad t squared plus 1 plus tangent theta is just t 
plus C, okay? And then we're still not done <laughs> because remember we made a substitution. We let T be the square root of X. So now let's go back to X's. So this is one half. You know, I'm gonna put this in the front, it'll look better. So square root of X times the square root, T squared would just be X plus one minus one half natural log. You know, these are not gonna be negative and I'm adding them together. So I could just switch to parentheses, square root X plus one plus T is rad X, excuse me, rad X plus C. Oh my goodness. And then remember, this was from by parts. So this was the integral of VDU that we had to do. So now for our final answer, we had u dv, no, uv, so x ln rad x plus rad x plus 1 minus this antiderivative, which I'm just going to copy. Oh, it didn't fit. What to do? Squish it in there. Squish. Okay. And then we can put it all together, distributing the negative, and we'll be on our merry little way. X ln rad x plus rad x plus 1 minus 1 half rad x rad x plus 1 plus 1 half ln of rad x plus 1 plus rad x plus c. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? I'm telling you, the part that tripped me up the most was cleaning up du. Because I had some nasty integral I was working with and then I thought, let's go back to the drawing board. Maybe I just needed to work through a little bit better algebra and then it would set me up for success. Okay, tell me if you ended up memorizing antiderivative of secant cubed theta d theta because I feel like depending on what you're studying, it's helpful. And that's it. Did you get it right? Did you cry? Did you love it? Let me know in the comments down below. I need how many more? We're almost there to New Year's. This has been fun, you guys. So thanks for requesting it. I love reading your comments, having a good time. And then I have to go back to teaching very shortly. So my break always flies by, does it not? Um, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And you can also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Math with Professor V. I love you guys so much, and I will be back tomorrow. Bye.